glasses, the one you get in this coolant in my eyes. Uh, this is a five millimeter hex for this drain right here. When we put that back in, it's got a crush washer that we also want to replace. Once we also drain the fluid there, we've got a couple of five gallon buckets here. There's only about five gallons total in the system to start with. We're going to pull off a couple of these large hoses here. These large hoses run up to the, the radiators up at the front of the car. And then we're going to pull off uh, these hoses near the water pump, the thermostat, and these other two small hoses here that run up to the heater. So let's get started. When the coolant started flowing out, I was actually very optimistic. It looked very clean and clear, thinking maybe not so much of the oil ended up in the coolant. Uh, upon further investigation, I pulled all these major hoses off. I was able to dump a little bit of kind of coagulant out of one of the hoses, which does tell me that there is some oil in the coolant system. Uh, all that means is that we're going to have to run, flush the coolant system with a mild detergent and then flush it out with some uh, water and before we put the coolant in it. Also note the hoses here, I've labeled them where they came off. Uh, even if you're going to replace the hoses, it's a good idea to keep very good close of, of your hoses, which side of the car they come off, which one part goes forward, which goes back. As you can see, I've got left, forward, right, forward. This one here, I actually labeled A, B, C, and I used a Sharpie, and I also put a Sharpie up there uh, on the pipes that say ABC, so I know exactly where those go. Uh, also notice that I've taped the clamps in place. That way uh, I know which clamp goes at what end, as well as best direction for the fastener so that I can, so I can actually tighten it and loosen it next time I'm going to take it off. So even if you're going to replace the hoses, do this and then transfer it all to the new hoses. All right, so we're about ready to move on to the next phase of uh, disconnecting stuff, but I want to take a moment here and talk about how to kind of secure up all these coolant lines. You don't want these things continually dripping on you or dripping on your floor and creating a safety hazard. So here I'm going to share with you some tips you know, that I've learned through the years. Uh, one, corks, jam some corks in the end there. Note that I painted it a highlight orange. I try to paint anything that I put on the car uh, that, that I know needs to come off later just so that it doesn't get missed. Another option is to cut off the fingers off of rubber gloves, stuff them on there, and then put some rubber bands around them. Seals up nice. For the bigger ones, and you need to have a little bit, you know, you still have a little bit of uh, coolant dripping in there, so I'll put some paper towels in there, and then, hey, a condom works pretty well over the end of that. Next, we're gonna start disconnecting the hydraulic lines, the brake fluid, the clutch, and uh, the power steering lines. So. You gotta pull this cover off here, which again is the 10 millimeter plastic nuts. And then there's a couple of there's connections under here that we're gonna have to disconnect. We remove this black panel here with the 10 millimeter plastic nuts. Now we're gonna be disconnecting the two hydraulic lines that are the power steering lines that run to the power steering unit up front. Uh, to the left of those, you have a fuel line, you have a, a clutch line, and then a little manifold that uh, distributes to the brakes. But we're just going to disconnect the two lines to the right there. That tells you. There's a little plastic clip in here. Right there. Looks just like that. It basically prevents this from backing itself out. So we got the little clip out and this is going to take a pair of uh, 15 combination, 50 millimeter combination wrenches and this one here is, which is actually missing the clip we are going to use a pair of 19 millimeter wrenches. As a pentosin, this cup kind of nasty stuff. You don't really want to get it in your face or in your mouth or on your hands. And so I've got a catch container here with a, with a uh, some paper towels in it. And this, this sucker drips forever when you're doing the rest of the stuff on the car. So when this is done too, we'll be finding a way to plug those up with some corks. While the hydraulic fluid is dripping and draining out, we're gonna go up here and this little clip system right up here, 
We're gonna pull that out. That's holding one of the hydraulic power steering lines in place. All you do is pull it and it slides out just like so. And then that frees up this, uh, this line right here, which is the power steering line. It's, event, it's ultimately up there is attached to the power steering pump on the motor. Once that clip is done there, there's a, an attachment here on the bottom of the, the floor. You can unscrew it. It's a whole clamp system that holds these whole, all four of these lines. And then there's a plastic clip. You can undo the clip and pop these two lines out of there. Just like so. Let's put that rubber back up in there and clip it back in so that it doesn't grow feet. Now we're going to disconnect the shift cables. Uh, they look kind of complicated, but they're actually quite simple. Uh, all you got to do is stick a screwdriver up under them. And they pop off just like that. <laughs> there we go. Popped off just like that. Okay, let's do the other one. There we go. Now we are going to do this clip right here. We're going to kind of compress this clip a little bit. And then this whole this whole shaft is gonna pull out of pull out that way. like so. Okay, there's another one a little further back and that's how you disconnect the shift cables. Next is the clutch slave. So this hydraulic line runs around here and then it's got it's mounted into a clip here with a little plastic pin which we're going to disconnect in a second. Then there's a flexible line here to allow some movement and then it goes into the clutch slave here. This is where you would normally uh, bleed your clutch. So right below that is a single 13 millimeter bolt and we're going to undo that and then the clutch slave just kind of pivots out to, to the left and out. First thing we're going to do is underneath this plastic clip there's a pin. We're going to push it up. That releases the prongs below. I'm going to take an awl and push it up just a little bit further. Check. Now I'm going to pull the pin or push the pin up through there, kind of squeezing the tabs in a little bit. There we go. See how it's all released out of there now. Now, 13 millimeter bolt. You can see that was not very tight. It's just a 13 millimeter bolt. Pull it out just a little bit that way, and then the spring pushes it out. Here she comes. what it looks like right there. So we're gonna just leave this up here. I'm gonna tie wrap it to uh, I'm gonna tie wrap it to something as we start to lower the motor so that it doesn't get caught on anything. One last thing before we move up to the top of the engine, if you got these fuel supply and return lines that need to be disconnected, they have a button on either side like this. See this is a gray one, there's one on top and there's a black one here on either side. You can undo this clip right here to give you a little bit of motion under here. And what happens is the pipe comes out of the plastic fitting in the back. So I'm going to squeeze this side and pull it apart. I've got a little catch basin down here. And let's do the other one. There we go. There we go. I'm going to let those drain for a little bit. The next thing you want to do with these two fuel lines while you're still working with them is you need to tuck them up. There's a parking brake cable that runs right through here that will stay with the car when this lowers. Both of these fuel lines go over top of that. So you've got to finagle both of these right now without kinking or bending them and get them on the other side of this cable. The other option is to, when you're lowering it, you've got a little bit more room is to do it then. Just don't forget that you need to do that. So if you have to, hang a tag or something on this to remind 
you and your crew that as it's being lowered it needs to be tended to. Time to bring it down.